back once again to Mustache Life Gaming, and we're playing Galactic Civilizations 3. That's it. Uh, anywho, um, I'll probably cut that last episode into two parts because it got super long, and I am really crappy at watching the timer. So, yeah. Anyway. So, we're starting on a part where I don't think I have anything new to do. So we'll turn. Anywho, so I was taking a minute to uh, kind of collect myself, and I thought of something. Now, if you haven't watched Babylon 5, or played Mass Effect, the, the whole game series, there's going to be some major spoilers. Because, basically, all the similarities I noticed between the two are major plot points. So, yeah. But also... I figure the ones of you who have not watched these, um, or played Mass Effect, probably are not going to get around to it anytime soon. Though I highly suggest you do. Babylon 5 is an awesome series, and Mass Effect is a really great game. All, all three of them are, are good. I actually enjoyed 3. I know a lot of people kind of thought the endings were crappy, but you know what? Whatever. I honestly didn't mind them. So... Anywho, um, but yeah, major, major similarities between the two. Um, for one, let's, let's take a look at this real quick. Um, in Babylon 5, the premise is there's this space station that was built specifically for all the major and minor races to get together and work out their differences and not, you know, be at war with each other all the time anymore. In Mass Effect, that's exactly what the Citadel is. Now, it wasn't built by the humans, and it wasn't built by any of the races that are currently active in, um, you know, in the, uh, the Mass Effect universe. But it serves the exact function that the Babylon stations, uh, mostly Babylon 5, the station the series was named for, uh, was... was um, you know, what it was actually built to do. So, you have that. Um, you have the main character, who is a human. He's canonically, or she, uh, because you can go either way, uh, canonically a veteran of some pretty serious stuff. Uh, that's exactly um, how both Sinclair and Sheridan are. Um in Babylon 5, the two different commanders they went through, uh, Sinclair being just for one season, but he comes back with um, sort of a, a different purpose later on, and Sheridan being the actually the much more Shepard-esque character in the series. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, eventually, uh, you know, Shepard, he's made into a, uh, a specter, and that's a, a group of people that work, and they're sort of autonomous to deal with, with threats and whatnot to peace within the, uh, within the Mass Effect universe. And the Rangers are sort of that. They're, they were founded by one of the species in Babylon 5 called the Minbari, um, but their purpose is a little bit more narrow. Uh, they were sort of specifically they're they're there for peacekeeping but they're much more in the shadows uh than even the specters are and they are uh specifically there to deal with this like eldritch foe that sort of just shows up every once in a while oh right by the way the two main antagonists um or the one from each each series are almost exactly the same thing. The reasoning is very similar. However, while one is a race of synthetics, the other is a race of semi-ascendant beings that use organic ships and things like that because that was the big crazy high-tech thing at the time um, that people like to use in science, science fiction, uh, which I think is awesome. They were called the Shadows, um, which is actually more of a euphemism for them, 
because their name was supposed to be like unpronounceable, and you never actually hear it. Um, and if you do, you wouldn't know that you were hearing it because it would probably just not sound like a word. Um, anyhow, so Shepard, as well as Sheridan, both have to work with these groups that are sort of extra, you know, uh, what's the word? Extra judicial, ah, words, extra judiciary groups to take down these ancient enemies that are pretty much bent on dominating or destroying civilization as we know it because it has gotten to a point where um, it needs to be culled in their opinion as the Reapers in Mass Effect or as the Shadows in, uh, in Babylon 5. So yeah, a lot of similarities there. Um, there's, there's probably more if I really dug into it, but I was just thinking about that. I'm like, hmm, that, that, that seems familiar. Cause I've been watching a lot of Mass Effect videos. I'm thinking about doing a playthrough of it because I enjoyed, like I said, I really enjoyed Mass Effect. It was, it was fun times for me. Um, I really enjoyed Babylon 5. Probably going to do another, uh, watching of, of that soon. You can get on Amazon. It's an older series. Like it's, it's, um. Like Star Trek Next Generation old. So it was it was out when I was young. Which has been quite a while. Um, but I suggest you watch it. Um, the actors are fantastic. Uh, Bruce Boxlitner is uh, Sheridan. And he is he's really great. You've got Mira Ferlin. She's been on stuff like uh, Lost. And a couple other series that I don't remember off the top of my head. You have... Andreas Katsoulis, who did a fair amount of acting for for Star Trek and a couple other series, um, and Bill Mummy, uh, he was he was in the original Lost in Space, and he's done a few other things. He's also I think he's a science fiction director, and there are some other actors in there. Uh, the Centauri are actually a race from Babylon Five. Um, which is awesome. Actually, one of my favorite species from Babylon 5, and the uh, the leader, quote unquote, in this game is one of my favorite characters in the show. So, um, yeah. Anyhow, I highly suggest you watch it. It's it's a good show. It has its its cheesy moments, but it's science fiction. Uh, what do you expect? Um, it also doesn't get too much into the whole pseudo science of it because none of the characters are focused on that. It's very focused on more of, more of like, political and philosophical um, things, as well as just epic, epicness in, in some spots. So, yeah. Ah! There's that random running into things again. Uh, let's see where we are. Oh, we need to just kind of continue on. Uh, Centauri Prime and Xenofax 1, I believe, are finally stable on happiness, which is good. Um, I think we're in the process of building... Oh no, we need to build... Bringer of Fire, interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm actually having issues deciding whether we want to go with the lasers. Eight T, seriously? Ah, uh, uses Illyrium. How much do we have? Two? No. Point of Light, Mark One. Right, Breeze of Stone. Uses Durantium. Sudden Storm is. Um, doesn't use anything. Piercing Breeze. Let's build... Let's build a bunch of those real quick. But let's also put in some constructors. I really, really, really wish we had more uh, things. I'm actually going to add the other, other planet to our sponsors here. You know, it's probably not going to help tremendous. Oh, wow, actually. Um, it was enough to knock a couple of turns off, so that's good. 
Um, I'm actually really debating because we have so much antimatter at our disposal currently. Um, I'm actually debating on whether or not we should go with um, antimatter weapons. I think that could actually work out quite well for us if we properly handle it. I mean, look, we've got five right here. Like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, so. Huh. Economic stimulus. Now, we should be able to get soil engineering. Go ahead and cancel. Cancel economic stimulus so they'll start working on things. We need to go ahead and put a put a market center or a trade post down just to get some extra finances. So, you know, industrialization, manufacturing, let's see. Research. Or What's well, under colonization, isn't it? That's engineering. Let's see here. Engineering, interstellar travel. Oh, perhaps that's, uh... Industrial, okay. Ah! Technology. Advanced regulation. Bork. 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 Okay. Now, the thing is, this is actually a militaristic society, so we do need to look into exploiting that strength. But I'm not sure when that will be possible. Because we only have one shipyard, and we only... <gasps> Sorry. Yeah, I have got use for this and oh, it's outside the fleet's range. That's baloney. Okay, um Well I know what we're doing. Do we really really need to do some exploration over this way and some expansion this way? If in fact, we do have um, something to colonize. Go check this star out. I have a good feeling now. So, got that one there. Let's turn. 25 research specialization. Excellent. Oh, also. Um, somebody actually made some really good Babylon 5 style ships. These are actually what the human ships use. Um, they use rotating parts for uh, gravity generation. They actually look really cool. Of course, they're not purple in the show. They're actually kind of a steel, steel grayish blue sometimes. Um, they actually did a really interesting... And uh, a unique job with the ship designs for for a lot of the series. You actually, see, I have some uh, so actually Centauri-inspired ships here. They like to use those little forward-facing fins and stuff in their designs. So I kind of did that. I haven't really done much of it in this playthrough just because I haven't really uh, felt like it. But they are there. Uh, the problem is I can spend hours in the ship designer. So we have an idle colony. Um, so we've got the trade or the trade post, trade capital. That could be in a better spot, but I will take it. Um, what was I actually going to put here? I think I was going to go with. Approvals, 100%. Matter 
power plant. That would have no use here. Let's go ahead and put a research lab down just to add a little bit extra research. And then economic stimulus to assist in that. Idle ship. We've got a constructor. Let's pop that one over here. Go ahead and get another influence relic or cultural relic. Oh, oh, awesome. Um, that works out very well for us. We can just colonize this planet. We're actually fairly lucky with the planets we can colonize. They all seem to be over 10, which is fantastic. Put this one here. And... Actually, let's do this one here. And this one there. And we will continue put down stations so as we can grow our influence. We're about to have research specialization, which will be fantastic. Wow, there's actually a lot of planets down here we can colonize. Kind of wish we'd started down here. But, you know, you deal with the hand you've uh, been dealt. Or play the hand you've been dealt, that's it. Institutional research. Oh no, sounds kind of racist. What? Anyway, uh, that probably made no sense to anyone but myself. And with that, I am fine. Extreme colonization. Yes. Or we continue down warfare or engineering. Improved logistics. Uh, yeah, let's go with improved logistics. That's going to help us out. In the long run, let's check our time because Lord knows, I'll, 18 minutes. Okay, uh, this is probably actually a good spot to stop on. We've got plenty of planets we can colonize now. Finally, thanks, Zenu. Um, so yeah, and we've got some some stuffs. Actually, I want to move him down here, or her. It could be a her. Who knows? Uh, probably him. If they're Centauri, they're a rather patriarchal society. Um, anywho, uh, so yeah, I hope you liked the video. Um, so if you want to go ahead and throw me a like or a subscribe to keep up with all the cool stuff I'm going to be throwing up on here, um, please do. It doesn't cost y'all anything. And um, if you want to give me some feedback, let me know what you want to, uh, what else you want to see. I'm, I'm down to play just about anything, uh, especially if we get me more views, because I like the validation. So, anyhow, I uh, will see you guys next time, and peace out.